Okay, so 1.1, I'm sorry, 1.5. We start this chapter from 1.5, and 1.5, the title is Origin of Cells. Now, there's three things that you have to learn in this chapter. Um, first is the theory of spontaneous generation. And since it's origins, we have to look at the origins of cells. Where did cells come from? And lastly, we have to learn origin, the theory of how eukaryotic cells evolve. So origin of eukaryotic cells. Now let's go, let's start with um, spontaneous generation. So from the word itself, spontaneous means to, to, to instantly happen, to be spontaneous. It just happened, it automatically happened. Um, so what's been a time, the scientific world believed that living cells or living organisms spontaneously um, appeared out of nothing. And there are several um, experiments done on this. Um, you might even believe spontaneous generation, like when you leave a piece of bread um, out in the open and then come back after one week, you're going to see like molds growing around the bread. So where did that come from? Did it just spontaneously appear? Um, of course, we'll say no, but long time ago, they actually believed that living organisms can appear spontaneously. Now, um, one experiment that, that challenged this theory was Louise Pasteur's experiment on swan neck, swan neck flask. So Pasteur's experiment. Now let me show you what Louise Pasteur, Louis Pasteur did. So normally, if you have um, nutrient broth left out in the open, um, after several days, you're going to see the broth turn cloudy, uh, meaning bacteria is starting to grow in the broth. So what Louis Pasteur did was to make a swan neck flask, and after some time, no bacteria grew, uh, grew in the broth. So common sense will tell us that the bacteria was actually coming from the air, and with his swan neck flask, um, air can go inside, but then bacteria can get trapped in this part of the of the bent tube. Therefore, the air that's coming into the broth is bacteria free. So this broth right here showed no bacterial growth. So that um, when he was able to say that bacteria don't spontaneously appear in the broth, it's present in the air and it just comes in contact with the broth. Therefore, it starts to grow there. Okay, now um, that we don't believe spontaneous generation, the next question is, uh, where do cells come from? So what is the origin of cells? So we have um, uh, what we call, I'm so sorry, cell division, or cells come from pre-existing cells. Pre-existing cells. Cells can only come from cells. And how did we know this? I remember in the documentary that we watched, Robert Lee Mackin experimented on um, the embryo of a chick and he found out that red blood cells seems to be, under the microscope, seems to be dividing at several stages. So he, he hypothesized that this cell can produce different cells. This cell can continue to produce more cells. So cells can only come from pre-existing cells through the process of cell division. Um, uh, please remember it was uh, Virchow who, who claims that that theory that cells can come from pre-existing cells. So for example, if we talk about you, um, how did you start? So we know that there's a sperm that united with an egg. And this too, upon fertilization, created what you call a zygote. So you were once one cell. When this united, you became one cell. And through the weeks that follow, this one cell will undergo different stages of cellular division, forming a ball of cells. So cells that keeps uh, that kept dividing, and um, you have now an embryo. So an embryo is that original one cell becoming many cells. So this was you, and then eventually it kept forming to your different body parts. So you have you have you. But once upon a time, if you go back, you started from an egg, 
and a sperm cell. Now, where did this egg and sperm cell come from? From your parents. How did your parents start? They also started from your grandparents' sperm cell and egg cell. But where did your grandparents start? From one cell also that came from the egg cell and the sperm cell of their parents as well. So we, the, the, you came from cells. The cells that make up, made up you also came from cells. So if we go back in time, so cells came from cells that came from cells that came from cells. Where did it all start? Okay, where did it all start? Um, we have some theories on where did it all start. So let's see, let me put it here. Where? How and where? Let's put the question how. So we have um, four evidences as to how. It's also in your textbook. So we have production of carbon compounds. So carbon compounds can be formed from inorganic material. So organic carbon compounds, the macromolecules of life, can be formed from inorganic materials. Uh, number two, we have these carbon compounds. Carbon compounds can self-assemble. So if they self-assemble, you can form um, the different parts and pieces of a cell. And number three, another evidence as to how is we know that uh, membranes can automatically form, so formation of membranes. So if you have a membrane, then you have that outer boundary for the cell. And then lastly, we have development of mechanism for inheritance, so the presence of the DNA. So if you can explain all of this, then it's kind of easy to hypothesize how we have a cell coming from inorganic material. So let's start from the production of carbon compounds right here. So what does it say in your textbook? Um, we can, uh, in experiments, we have shown that if we have, if we introduce electric charge to different gases, for example, you have ammonia, hydrogen, or methane gas, and you condense it, you can form amino acids. Um, the only thing you needed was the right environment, so electric charge, let's say lightning in the atmosphere, to form carbon compounds. Okay, second, carbon compounds can self-assemble, so it can form polymers. Once you have carbon compounds, um, the possible site, it says in your book, a possible site for origin of the first carbon compounds is in deep sea vents. So these are under the under the ocean where there's really really hot gush of water and these is carrying inorganic these gush of water carries inorganic chemicals or sulfides and these sulfides plus the heat enables your carbon compounds to self-assemble into macromolecules or polymers okay another evidence we have is the formation of a membrane so if you put a if a if you put a phospholipid layer in water, it can self-assemble into a membrane. Let me show you. So you have here a phospholipid bilayer. What you, you can observe is a phospholipid layer, if you put it in water, the, all of those fatty acid tails will get attracted to each other, thereby spontaneously forming or self-assembling into a bilayer. So this can automatically happen. Phospholipid layers can self-assemble into a lipid bilayer, thus forming the structure of the cell membrane. So lastly is the presence of DNA in your cells. Now, uh, DNA defines what a cell would look like, what an organism would look like, and this is passed from the parent to offspring, from generation to generation. And to be able to express the DNA, or to be able to replicate the DNA, you need enzymes. Um, but to be able to have enzymes, you need the DNA to code for the enzyme. So the problem is, um, which came first? Is it, well, you can't have an enzyme without the DNA, and you cannot replicate the DNA without the enzyme. So which, 
which occurred first, having the DNA or having the enzyme? The answer to that problem is the presence of an RNA. So it's theorized that once upon a time, it was the RNA that coded, that made enzymes. And then eventually, um, the DNA became the genetic material instead of the RNA. But one, it, once it was the RNA, therefore you had enzymes. Eventually, it became the DNA. The DNA kept making enzymes, and enzymes continued to replicate the DNA. So, these four factors can give you an idea that um, how cells could have evolved. Like, where did cells come from? Okay, make sure you review this um, proposed processes on where cells came from so we have origins of cells then we'll look at um, we're going to look at origins of eukaryotic cells quickly um, there's two types of cells your prokaryotic and your eukaryotic so where did eukaryotic cells come from to simplify this um, we use the process called i mean not to simplify to explain this um, we use a process of endosymbiotic theory which states, and um, endosymbiotic theory, sorry, not, not which states, endo means inside, symbiotic from the word symbiosis theory. Once upon a time, there was a bacteria that went inside a larger bacteria, and it lived in symbiosis with this larger um, bacteria. Eventually, it stayed there as, a, as an organelle in that larger um, prokaryote. And this kept happening until you have your eukaryotic cells complete with the different organelles inside. Um, so all of the cells started as a prokaryotic cell. And now you have a eukaryotic cell because um, the larger prokaryotic cells started engulfing smaller prokaryotic cells. And it lived inside the cell in symbiosis inside the larger prokaryotic cell. And it stayed there. And now you have a eukaryotic cell. Two of our example evidence for this is the presence of the mitochondria and the chloroplast inside a eukaryotic cell. So as you can see here in the picture, you have this larger prokaryote engulfing a uh, smaller prokaryote. And it lived inside the cell. It eventually lived inside the cell. It's symbiosis with the cell as an organelle to the cell. So that's... Um, the mitochondria and also another example is your chloroplast so you have here a process where the cell is engulfing prokaryote and it eventually lived inside the eukaryotic cell as an organelle to that cell so this is the chloroplast do we have evidence for that of course we do so if we look at both the chloroplast and the mitochondria both of them has a dna a genetic material inside um, both of them have ribosomes of this size 70s which is the same size of ribosomes of your uh, bacteria and prokaryotes um, it also um, they also have their own proteins so mitochondria and chloroplast have their own proteins and both the mitochondria and chloroplast are seen to undergo cell division so if it has all of these characteristics hmm, does it it will make you think that it was once a prokaryote that was engulfed by a larger eukaryote.